Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can quickly and easily import stock prices for any stock from Yahoo Finance's API in Python and then quickly export them into Excel. So let's get started right away. And the first thing you're going to notice is that for my development environment, I'm using Visual Studio Code. If you're using Jupyter Notebooks, it's not a problem at all. This should function the exact same way. So the first thing we're going to do is import our required libraries. And if you don't have any of these four libraries here, quickly just go into your command prompt. And for, let's say for the first one, Y Finance, just type pip install Y Finance and hit enter. I don't need to hit enter because I already have it installed on my computer, but it will download after you do that. Okay, so once you do that, you're just going to type the same code that I have here. So, right, we're importing Y Finance because that's where we're going to pull the stock prices from. We're importing pandas because that's how we're going to create the data frame which is the table that's going to hold the stock prices and then from date time we'll import date time and time delta and this will allow us to pull in today's date and then pull in a date from two years ago and fill in all the prices in between and then lastly we're going to import os which is what we'll use to finally output the stock prices into excel so first thing we're going to do is we're going to define which tickers we want and the time range that we're interested in. So I've chosen five out here. So we'll say tickers equals, and we're just going to be putting them into a list. For, so first I want to see SPY, which is the largest S&P 500 ETF. Then I want to see BND, which is one of the largest bond market ETFs. Then I'm interested in GLD, which is the largest uh, gold ETF. And then I'm also interested in QQQ, which is the largest NASDAQ uh, ETF. And then finally VTI, which is the largest all world stock index. And we'll run that. And so we pulled in our tickers just fine. Now we're going to set the end date to today. And so how we're going to do that is we'll just declare a variable to store the date. I'll call it end date. And we'll say equals date time dot today. So we're using this function within the date time library. And we'll run that. There it ran, but maybe we want to print it just to make sure that we got the right date. And so I've grabbed that and printed. There we go. That is today's date. And uh, let's set the start date to two years ago. So now this is where we're going to be using that time delta function I talked about earlier. So let's call this one start date. So start date equals end date. Um, subtract time delta. And then... This is where we're going to fill in uh, where we want this range to be. So we're going to say that days equals 2 times 365. Um, so basically, I'm going back two years. If you wanted to go back five years, then you could use this same code, but you would just change 2 to 5. And then let's just print start date to make sure we got the right date. So print start date. And let's run that. Okay. Cool. So this is uh, two years in the past. And uh, anyway, so next we're going to download close prices. So we'll create an empty data frame to store the close prices. So first thing, close DF equals, and this is where we'll be using pandas, PD dot data frame. There we go. Let's run that. So just got an empty data frame there. Now we're going to download the close prices for each ticker. And this is where we're going to start using the uh, Yahoo Finance library. So for ticker in tickers, so we're just creating a for loop where we're going to loop through each of the elements in this list here. Okay, so data. So we're going to basically create a data frame that holds all the output from Yahoo Finance. And then we're going to grab the column we want after that. So we'll say yf dot download and then ticker start equals start date and then end equals end date. There we go. And then finally, we're going to create a new data frame to hold just a single column from this data frame. So all we really want is the close prices in this example. So we're gonna say close DF, and then we'll say in brackets ticker. So we're creating a new column called ticker in uh, close DF. And it's gonna be equal to data 
close. There we go. So let's run that. Uh, what did I do wrong here? What I did wrong was I didn't put parentheses after data frame. So we'll run that one once again, and then we'll run this one. There we go. So we downloaded the stock prices for all five of these stocks. And now we're going to just make sure that this um, pulled in the data correctly. So let's just print the data frame that we created, uh, close DF. And let's run that. That's looking good. So we got these close prices for all five of these for the last two years. Now here's where we're gonna output this data and ex or export it to Excel. So what we need to do is set the output path to a folder. So I already know where I want to put it. I'm gonna put it right here. So what I did is I just clicked in here, hit Control C, and then went into here and hit Control V. And that's how I got that. And make sure to put R in front of it. So that's the output folder. And now let's make a new variable called output file equals os.path.join. And now we're going to put in that output file object. Oh, sorry, output folder. And then we're going to have to name it. So let's just call it stock prices dot xlsx for example and then let's hit uh close df dot to excel so this is the actual function we'll be using to output it to excel output file there we go and let's run that i think i need to have run that and now we'll run this and we'll go here and now we've got this a uh, file that just appeared in our output folder and I'm just going to open it up to make sure that everything is looking good and there we go so all the data came into Excel we've got two years worth of data and it's ready to be used for analysis in Excel I hope you enjoyed the video if you need help with any quantitative finance projects or financial modeling reach out to me with the link in the description thank you